Hey, a pleasant good evening, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a Pittsburgh Pirates versus our Philadelphia Phillies Game 2 preview. After our Phillies pulled out the miraculous comeback, having to come back for NOLA twice in big comeback in one month, if you told me that at the beginning of this month, and said that we would still be in it, and really just two games behind the Braves as they're going on to play one and a half games today, making up a game that was suspended in the fifth in Atlanta, in San Diego, and then playing a game in San Diego the whole game, starting at 10-10. So, they're doing that while we're playing the Pirates. The Phillies got to take care of business after that huge comeback yesterday. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoy the content, you can do it in the easy widget that will be up at the top at the end. We'll do it right now as you're watching the video down below. We really appreciate your support and share it out if you want to as well. Let's get into tonight's ball game, though. As the Phillies, of course, won 12-6 to yesterday. Noah was able to settle in a little bit. But, obviously, he didn't pitch a good game. I never say when a guy of his caliber gives up that many runs, he pitched a good game. But, at least he got us deep enough into the game that we didn't have to tax our bullpen. So, we have guys available for this evening, if need be. But, this evening, you got Kyle Gibson going. You're hoping against the Pirates. Of course, he helped us out not getting swept against the Pirates. So, you're hoping against the Pirates, he's able to pitch a good start again and go deep into the game, which is key. Hopefully, into the sixth inning, at least, and hopefully into the seventh, which would be great because then you could just go to the back end of the bullpen, guys, and go from there, and hopefully we'll be able to get some offense going and kind of stamp on Sam Howard a bit, who's been struggling with a 3-4 and four record and a 580 ERA. So you would hope we get the Kyle Gibson you see more his first start here and with the Rangers than the one that's just been solid here. But I think the Phillies off of Sam Howard, you got to be able to jump on him. He's a lefty. They haven't been as good against lefties, so that's always concerning. But you got to be able to find a way to get to this kid. You can't let him pitch a game like Keegan Aiken did and then have to figure out a way to score in that Orioles series when Aiken pitched later in the game. you got to be able to score off of this kid as a starter. That is a key to this game. Get offensive runs early. Corey Simon said in the pregame yesterday, try to get on them early and not look back. Obviously, yesterday that didn't work at all, and the Phillies had to come all the way back, and it worked, and they made the comeback. But you don't want to have to do that again. You have Kyle Gibson on the mound. You have another good pitcher on the mound. Hopefully, he's able to step up to the plate and not have one of those rough innings like Noah did yesterday. And then you're also able to get going and get scoring. So as the final wrap-up of this video. Let's see how the lineups are going to shake out today as the Phillies face lefty Sam Howard versus right-hander Kyle Gibson. The Pirates, as always, have Cabrian Hayes leading off the third baseman, Yoshi Tasugo in right field batting second, Brian Reynolds in center field batting third, Colin Moran batting fourth at first base, Ben Gamble, the journeyman, batting fifth in left field, Kevin Newman batting sixth at second base. Michael Perez, the guy that had two pass balls after they didn't have pass balls for over 170-some innings or whatever it was, 190-some innings. So that was kind of a funny thing. That's just baseball for you. Is batting seventh. Hoy Park is batting eighth, the defensive shortstop for them. And then Sam Howard is batting ninth. Where the Phillies have Odubel Herrera continuing to lead off, batting first, playing center. Gene Segura continuing to hit second, batting, or, yeah, hitting second, excuse me, playing second as well. And then Bryce Harper in right field, batting third. Obviously the guy, 312, 33 home runs, 13 stolen bases, 80 RBIs. You can't ask anything more of Harper. And then in the fifth inning, maybe the key is, obviously starting tonight, batting fourth at 270 with 16 home runs, 72 RBIs, and 13 swipe bags himself. And JT Romero, he's getting going, but... Uh, obviously, like they joked yesterday, you just got to rest in the first five innings of every game. But obviously, you can't do that. He's in again tonight after playing great after coming in, getting the two hits that put the game away to make it 10-6 and then 12-6 in yesterday's ball game. And yeah, Brad Miller, really, after he said that quote weeks ago now, saying after right after Reese got injured that he's playing basically like garbage and has to step up, he has actually sort to do that and is now up at 230, 19 home runs, 46 RBIs, the most home runs he's had since he had, I believe it was that 30 campaign home run season when he was in Tampa Bay, but somewhere near there. And then you have Andrew McCutcheon batting eighth at 223, 25 home runs, 76 RBIs. I'm in favor of keeping Kutch pants this year on a one-to-one -one year basis at this point. He's still productive in the RBI and home run potential, and it's not like batting average is as much as I don't necessarily agree with that, but as important in today's game as people made it out to be when I was growing up with baseball. And then you got Didi batting seventh, um, playing shortstop, of course. Freddie Galvis staying in the lineup, as he should, batting eighth at third base. He's been another huge addition. He's been playing well since he's come back here, and hopefully he continues to do that. And then, of course, you have the pitcher, Kyle Gibson, who's even been getting a few knocks himself. 
as he's come in. So that's how the lineup shake out. As I said, the Phillies got to try to get ahead on Sam Howard early and then just keep it going. Have Kyle Gibson get deep into the game, at least into the sixth inning, preferably hopefully into the seventh inning. But if you get at least in the sixth inning, then you got your three best guys going at the end. You get into your seventh, then you have your obviously the best part of the Phillies bullpen and just using the two guys that have actually been doing good or two to four guys that have actually been doing good if guys like Bradley that pitched yesterday were able to pitch in back-to-back -back days today, which Joe doesn't always do that, so we'll have to see what they do. But at least because Noel was able to stay in that game for a little bit extended time after that crap second inning, the Phillies were able to not have to tax their bullpen and actually have people available for tonight, which will be nice, but also hopefully not needed if Kyle Gibson's able to go for that seventh inning and into that seventh inning. So the keys are jump on them early, Kyle Gibson's pitching, and then obviously the other one, as always with the Phillies, is their defense as it comes into games. You have to continue to play good defense. Didi's looked better recently making some plays up the middle, so you got to continue to play better defense to win the game as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I hope you all enjoyed this preview to Game 2 of the Phillies and Pirates series. A big game as the Braves again play one and a quarter game, finishing a game that was suspended in the fifth and then playing a game right after that, a full game in San Diego today. So they got a busy schedule. Hopefully they're able to lose both and the Phillies make up a game beating Sam Howard and the Pirates tonight. Let's go Phillies. Ring that bell energy. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe.